Hello, Blake Greed is here with another on one short clip. And in this one, I want to teach you how to correct your white balance in two really simple, easy steps. And I'm not talking about using the eyedropper or changing your white balance uh, over here from custom to say cloudy or something like that. Okay. I want to teach you how to use the principles of color theory to get the pinpoint accurate white balance for almost any photo. I'm going to say almost because it might not work for every single image. Okay. So the idea behind white balance, I shoot in raw and when you shoot in raw, it just collects the data that's that's available in the scene. It doesn't necessarily uh, apply a white balance to the image. It's the simplest way for me to explain it with a JPEG, though. It gives you a snapshot of whatever white balance you had selected. So the big takeaway here before we even begin this is this is best suited for raw images because a JPEG, if you try to edit the white balance of a JPEG afterwards, you're only going to be able to take it so far before the image starts to deteriorate. Okay. So I could come over here to this eyedropper and I could select like maybe this cheek or something. And it looks like it might be a little bit better, but I'm seeing a big magenta cast down here because what this eyedropper is doing, it's saying, okay, Hey Blake, find me a neutral color here. Well, how do I know what a neutral color is in this image unless I was using one of those passport checkers or something? Well, I don't. I don't know what's actually a 50% gray or a neutral gray color in this image. So it's very difficult for me to select the eyedropper here. I could come down here and say, well, is it daylight? Is it cloudy? Is it shade? Is it tungsten fluorescent? None of these are actually working like I want them to. So what I need to do is come down here to this vibrance adjustment and slam that all the way up. Yes, I told you to slam this all the way up. Why? Because what it's doing is it's showing me the most dominant color in this image in my white balance that's that's making this image not look right. And that's in the yellows. So if I were to come over here and just go ahead and drop this temperature until we start to see some of that yellow fade away and get into the blue area, it's okay if you go a little too far. I'm also seeing a little bit of magenta that's being cast down here. So if I move this green over just a slight bit, now we change this back over to zero on the vibrance and our image is a much more neutral color. If we look at the before and after of this, here's the before, very yellow, extremely yellow. Here's the after more of a neutral color. These sidewalks weren't that glaring yellow. So the, the two steps, jack your vibrance all the way up, then come into your temperature and maybe your tint in order to correct that white balance. I've been playing with this and it works pretty much every single time on every photo. Now, here's another thing here, because when we do that, sometimes we lose some of our tonal detail. So one of the better places to do this is to actually come over into effects, add a filter and add a color enhancer filter. And what we're going to do is we're going to slam that vibrance up. We're going to drop that temperature again. Okay, till we start to get some of that blue on there instead of the yellow and then make this a little bit more in the green. So we're getting rid of that awful yellow color cast and then we'll drop that vibrance down to zero again. Okay, so now what I want to do with this is because in this process, it looks like I lost some of my tone. If I were to go over here to the gear icon and select my blending options, it's set to normal. If I come down here and set it to color, look what happens. When we set that to color, what's happening is it's only applying the color information to that image. So uh, in develop, we only we don't get this ability to use blending modes, but over in effects we do. So we can do our color correction very easily over in effects. Now, why does this work? Well, I told you that this works based on color theory principles, right? So let's go back over into browse and right here. I have a color wheel that we can take a look at and this color wheel shows us what is on the opposite end of the spectrum. So the basics, the most simple form of understanding color theory for a photographer's perspective is that anytime you add the opposite color of any color on the color wheel, you're going to subdue the saturation of that color using other colors. This is a painterly thing and can be kind of difficult to wrap your head around until you really start to play with it. So what colors are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about yellow and blue and magenta and green because those are the ones that we use for our tint and our temperature. So we jack that vibrance up to make that saturation of that yellow really high. We applied more blue to it and then remove the vibrance to get a more natural looking image instead of the uh, very bright, vibrant yellow that we had. So it's actually a really simple task of using color theory to correct the white balance in our image. The image will tell us what it needs if we allow it to. If we extract that information from it, jack that vibrance up, 
bring that temperature down or up depending on how blue or how yellow that image is. So again, my name is Blake Rudis here with your short clip on manually correcting white balance with color theory principles. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you.